Hey yo, little man, what's going on everyone? Nick here with Little Man YGL back at again with another video, and we're here with a special guest. State your name. Hey yo, little man. My name is Dave. I'm a member of Team Little Man. And uh Nicholas and myself are gonna be going over this Lightsworn deck you see in front of you right now. Very excited to be here. This is only my second time. Thanks for having me, Nick. I appreciate of course, you. Of course, like any member of Team Little Man is allowed to go onto the channel. Speaking of, we are at 580 subscribers. Thank you so much for all the love and support you've been giving to the channel so far. We're going to have some more videos like this. More War League, more Amaryllis contact, more Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! And hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. I will wait. Also, we have a link to the Discord in the description below, but let's not get to that. Let's just jump into this deck list that we see right here. So we're talking Lightsworn today, you know, like, and, and, you know, I know that you've played. So tell us with your journey with Lightsworn, how long have you been playing Lightsworn for? Like, what is your expertise in Lightsworn? Share that with us. Share that with us. Uh, so I've been playing Lightsworn since 2008, I think, whenever Light of Destruction came out. Um at the time i really hadn't been playing competitively and then i pulled a judgment dragon out of a box i wanted to get light sworn cards because i had this absolutely abysmal idea of milling cards from my deck to mill exodia pieces and then use backup soldier to take them back and then win the game <laughs> um truly truly scrub mentality <laughs> um but anyways then i pulled a judgment dragon from my first from my first booster box and then I subsequently pulled a Judgment Dragon from a booster pack every weekend for the next three weekends. <laughs> um, and, you know, at the time, nobody had that stuff. So I figured, OK, let me let me play this. And after failing at my Exodia variant, <laughs> I just played the real deck. Right. Um, and, I, you know, again, it was my first competitive deck and I got very, very attached to it. I had a blast playing with it. Um, you know, I mean, spin to win is generally fun for me um, i tried it in goat i tried playing uh reasoning gate turbo and i absolutely hated it it is in no way shape or form as fun as light sworn right um so again i have a blast playing with the deck and i played it at edison i played christia sworn and i scrubbed then um and then i tried playing christia sworn in edison now and it was good for about 30 seconds um <laughs> And then I realized, no, I'm just drawing broken all the time. This deck actually sucks. And <laughs> I switched back to uh, I switched back to pure because I just I, I don't know. I thought the variant was terrible. Right. Um, and this is right now the build you're looking at is is the build that I have found to work best so far. Um, you know, I just try to take advantage of the most the most broken cards in the format that makes sense. Pot of Avarice being one, uh, which is why there's three of them. Right. Um, you know, and and like we had talked about earlier in the day, you know, this is the third, this is the third or fourth version of this deck. I had built it originally, uh, modeling it off of your Amaryllis deck, uh, Nick, with like triple wing blast and a single threatening roar. And um, I don't know if that's what your deck looks like right now, but uh, you had sent me a deck list like that at one point. I was like, well, you know what? This deck's really good. How can I... I want to model Lightsworn off of that. Right. And then when I was playing Triple Blast, um, I sent it to you, and then you made some changes, and the changes were definitely sound. Um, bumping up the T-Roars was a, a very, very good choice. Yeah, I noticed very quickly that once we went to three tier wars, it just made, like, Celestia so fucking broken because, like, you're able to set up the Lightsworn and not have to worry about it getting, like, run over or whatnot. And, um, and like kind of coming to that is that we see, a, I see a lot of like Twilight variants in the format. People play Dark Arm Dragon, Chaos Sorcerers, Monster Reincarnations, not playing Avarice at all. Like, and it, it seemed to me, I know we were talking about this a little bit, but like Light Swarm was almost in like a deck crisis, like in Edison. Like it just felt so bad, just so bad in general. Yeah. So like, what? Yeah, I mean, it did just get slaughtered by the band list, you know, right before Edison, right. At the Edison tournament happened. <laughs> um with all due respect it, it had it coming i mean the deck was degenerate i mean not that it's not degenerate now but it was substantially degenerate more degenerate rather uh before that right. um three of these you had three you know, of these you had three of these also yeah it was insane it was insane yeah you know and um and it's like you said like i felt like the deck was in limbo like it has so many powerful cards but it was just like it was just not good or nobody figured it out you know like i said christia sworn i saw christia sworn topped a whole lot um and when edison started to take off i feel like a lot last year a lot of christia sworn decks topped and 
it's it's not to and in, in no way shape or form am i trying to knock the people who built them because they were incredible deck lists uh and and the players you know i mean listen if you top if you top one time okay yeah whatever if you top more than one time okay no, there's something to it you know but um i felt like a lot of times the deck lists that i was seeing were just things just worked out that day right. because again lightsworn is spin to win and I felt like uh, the stars just aligned sometimes for Christia decks that topped. Um, I started talking about Christia again because you mentioned Monster Reincarnation. Right. I was always a big advocate of Monster Reincarnation in the deck. Um, you know, uh, the monsters are mo monsters are what makes Edison, and being able to just grab one is great. Unfortunately, in pure, the only thing you really want to grab with Monster Reincarnation is Judgment Dragon. Yeah. Um, so it's like, okay, if I don't have JD in the graveyard, my monster incarnations kind of lackluster. Like, do I really want to go neg one and like grab a fucking Lila? Like, right. not really. <laughs> you know? Right. And like, sometimes um, you like had to do that to make like recharge live and stuff like that. And that's, I think for me, like when I was, when you gave me your list and it, it looked very sound when we were going down the average direction, it's just like, one of the things I thought about, I know, remember you were playing two Celestia. We, I bumped it up to three and then you took on three also. And it just felt like, if you mill through your deck and you just hold Avarice and you have a Celestia play, you could literally Avarice back all your Wolves, draw two cards, and then like milling four off the top of your deck pretty much guarantees you, statistically speaking, that you're going to hit a Wolf after that. And like, it feels like some of the games that like, at least I was playing with this version of the deck, I was winning without even summoning Judgment Dragon. And the bigger things with some of the other decks in the format, when you're trying to play Dark Arms and Chaos Sorcerers and like just some of these other big bomb cards that like, they just don't feel like they flow very nicely with the deck or like what it's ultimately supposed to do. And it's, if you have mm -hmm. more cards that are like geared towards like your actual main and cause like people were playing Caius's instead of Celestia's, which to me is just like crazy because it's like, okay, if you play Caius, then you got to play alert. Alert does not work with most of the deck. Solar recharge works no. with Celestia. So at least you're able to ditch this guy. And also Celestia like gives, gives you, closer to your game plan it's like it hit and it hits two cards it's crazy so like hamster yeah. of celestia plays were like some of the things i was really focusing on and like i think if you just keep it simple and not try to add too much flavor to it the deck is going to feel a bit more consistent instead of this like roll the dice kind of deck but um even after yeah. i gave the deck back exactly. to you after my performance in war league week one where i won against my opponent you had a couple of additions too between the side deck and the main deck that you said are like very good and incredible, and especially card destruction. So talk a little bit about like card destruction and its place in the main deck and what do you feel like it connects the deck together, you know? So, uh, so before we talk about card destruction, I do want to just chime in as well. on what you said about the, like the dark armed chaos sorcerer, like Phantom of Chaos stuff. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest weaknesses with the Twilight variant, because again, I do see people trying to play it. I tried to play it myself. Um, the big problem with the deck is that Chaos Sorcerer is at one and Trigodi is at one. Yeah. Um, because then you just you kind of pigeonhole yourself into playing cards that, for lack of a better word, they they suck. You know, like Phantom of Chaos is cool and everything. It's cool when you're removing a Norlaris, but it's really not that cool when you're removing it uh, when you're removing a Judgment Dragon and I can't do any damage afterwards. You know. Because anybody, anybody who's got even uh, a little bit of skill in this game is not going to commit a ton of cards to the board knowing that I, that you play Judgment Dragon right. unless they have a way to stop it. You know, and it's like, if I go Phantom of Chaos and they respond with like a Book of Moon, I'm like, okay, well, I just removed my JD and now my Phantom of Chaos is face down and it's going to die. It's going to get eaten up by Ashura and then I'm going to be tight. <laughs> you know? right. um, I think it's way better in 2011, but but nevertheless, card destruction. Again, I took the idea of card destruction from from your Amaryllis deck as well, and I thought about something that you said, which is that you just sometimes you just draw a hand of trash, and you're like, wow, this hand fucking sucks, and I need I need a new one. And okay, yeah, it, there's some cards in here that are neg ones. Card destruction, you know, inherently a neg one. T roar is also a neg one. Yeah, but. But you you play the the pot of avarices to to gain the plus one. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully you see them. You right. gain you play the avarices to gain the plus one. You play the hamsters to gain the plus one. If you play Celestia right, you can gain a plus one. You know, there's a lot of ways. You know, Wolf off the top off the top of the deck is a plus one. Yeah. You have a lot of ways that you can generate plus ones to kind of to counteract those those negs. 
you know, especially with the T roar, because you think about it, yeah, you flip T roar and it's a neg one. But if I have a chain on the board and it gets killed by a, an alias, well, that's a neg one too. And right. if I yeah, T roar, yeah. now I still have a body to uh, to do something with, you know. Um, so card destruction again, like you just draw some trash hands, and you're like, wow, you know, having another another piece to the puzzle that can help you just get rid of this jank hand because you can ditch a jank hand and just draw some busted stuff i mean light sworns is going to do light sworn things um but the, the biggest issue that the deck comes up with is bricking and drawing things that are stupid um yeah like yeah. these hands these and, random hands and, of wolves and necrogarnas and plagues and like sometimes you have too many celestias or judgment dragons and and you feel confident doing so because if you took a handful of monsters and you pick up avarice after that it's like you replace your minus one like and that was a really good point is that like Monster Reincarnation was another minus one on top of it. It felt like you were losing so many cards to commit to one card. Yeah. Like with Avarice, it feels like you regain those what you ultimately lose. And if you play more towards that direction, then like even cards like Tragodia feel a little bit better because there's a point in the game always where like Tragodia even starts feeling like shit because you've minus too much. And he's just sitting there yep. as like a zero zero doofus and he doesn't do a whole ton. But, um, <laughs> you know. That's, but that's the nature of the beast. And even like when we're looking towards the side deck here, lots of interesting, like you're able to, like, because you're not playing like the Chaos Monsters or Dark Monsters, you can put the play cards like Iron Wall, which this card is ridiculous, man. This stops you get Iron Wall is just ridiculous. A very, very slept on card in Edison format. Again, like I don't get to play, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, none of us get to play dual monsters as much as we want to. Right. Um, if it's not 24 hours a day, let's face it, that's not enough. Um, but <laughs> Iron Wall is, a, I think it's a, just an, absolutely insane card um you know you're watching one of the replays i do cite it in and it's it's pretty terrible and uh, i was looking at it and i'm like yeah i'm gonna put this in and then i drew it and i'm like why did i put this in here um but the matchups where the card is good is just insane and, it, and it's really to a lot of my sideboard is to just not lose to stupid stupid stuff right. like iron wall i don't want to lose to Nor norlaris I, if i see that deck i want to be like okay yeah i'm gonna spank this deck in game two because that deck i mean that deck can just take you out you know yeah you, you can just they can just spin to win and just take your ass out real quick and you don't even get to play right um that's why i put the iron walls in and even though i have the decrees i put the single dust tornado in yeah. uh, again more so because i just don't want to lose to stupid stuff like i don't want to be playing against like a randomly run up against the glad beat glad beast deck and they go laquari set four d fissure and i'm like well that sucks <laughs> you know <Right. laughs> um that sucks and that that's where a lot of my side deck stuff came in from i mean the arcus arcus is very good against quick draw it's good against amaryllis it's decent in the mirror decent i would say yeah uh right and even you have like you know here for like your zombie matchups your recruiter stuff and and she plays right to the game yeah so and then yeah i think aaron is it's aaron's game. insane at, at in the one in the sideboard the card is just so powerful and the matchups it's good like there are matchups where i'm gonna side it out i'm gonna side it out against black wings every game i'm gonna side it out against heroes every game right. um but even but I side the matchup that it's good insane. Yeah, I side her in with Amaryllis too, and she's just like she mills three. She puts back recruiters. And you're just able to push through nonsense with this card. It's very good. Also, mind control, just grabbing like rogue hamsters, hamsters. and rikos, and you're just like you feel so free. I mean, that's also a reason why we don't play brain control because like you don't need that fucking card. But like you need to take sets the same way that you need to text take sets and um like in go format or anything like that. But yeah let's let's go over some replays like because i played the deck week one slightly different list and then you play the deck week two and you played another replay in which you just annihilated someone so we're going to show off a little bit of uh the the power more or less of this deck and the funny thing too yeah. is that i was playing it's amaryllis too in my week one yeah <laughs> and, like, and one of the things in my in the in the replay from my war league and i'm sorry to cut you off man that was a terrible mill yeah. um <laughs> In the replay from my War League, you're going to see the power of card destruction. Because game two, I had no business winning that game. Right. And then I threw card destruction. Right. And right here, but, you uh, see how, like, T-Roar just, like, stopped all that. He can't even put Torrential down because of it. Yeah, it basically turned your Lila... It, your, it turned your T-Roar into a pseudo-cold wave because you have Lila on the board. Right. And then we draw Plex better, and then we wrap it up here. <laughs> Like, well, that hand fucking sounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, but then you do. You just clean it up. That's great. What's his face down? Torrent? 
uh, no, Morphing Jar. He had another card. Oh, you hit Torrent. I fifty. Nice. End, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, nicely done. After that, we just talked about the yeah. spreader and, you know, <laughs> and the swing. And then that's and that is Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, but T Roar two two turns in a row, like crazy. Crazy. Yeah. And it's very good in the mirror match, Lightshorn versus Lightshorn, having T Roars down. Yeah. And very he, good. Look at that. He T Roared me right here. Look how good he's doing now. You know, like he's going to get three more mills out of it. T Roar is such an underrated card in this form. So, very good uh, card. <laughs> Man, that's a nice lightning vortex, too. Yeah, I'm See, and you're drawing a lot of the stupid stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, but you're still able to like play. Anything crazy either. Like it's just doing it. Man, if I had Honest right here, I would have absolutely own that deck but you know oh that was nice right there that was very nice yeah if you had honest honest is insane it's it's part of the reason i've considered uh playing i've considered playing a single copy of beckoning light right um, it was just grabbing honest is insane yeah i've i've always found that card to be like just so slow but like there's it is there. very slow and that's why i wouldn't play more than one more than one because if you draw two like you're just upset right <laughs> you're just upset you're very upset very upset but avarice is gonna give us you know a nice charge draw. And, then... yeah, and, a, and a wolf again there's a wolf again bc like you're drawing the stupid things but you're still able to play right and I, you I are drawing a lot here. Of i should have things. attacked lila into the um titanial there and then after that try to switch it to pop the uh ddr to clear both titanials so that was a misplay on my end but you know it's unfortunate you drew the Garrett in that hand. Yeah, but we're we're we're, we're pile driving. I knew that was morphing jar because I played emeralds ten billion times to know when someone is setting morphing jar. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Oof. Let's see. Let's play that roulette, baby. Yeah. Well. Yuck. Man, not a single plus one. Not a single plus that's one. Yu-Gi-Oh. But like also, even when that. you're not, even when you're not milling, you feel like I feel like I'm like in the game at some point, you know. Draw a yeah, I mean, look at your board. Like your board is so beefy, even though they're weenies. Like it's just very, it's just right. very, it's, go it's just very good, here, you know, because we have no reason not to. <laughs> we don't get. Stuck. Yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna eat it to that skill drain. Yeah, so we might as well try to win the game, you know. Yeah, and clearing both. Yeah, so. And he was lying, and now we're, we're just having the bigger beat stick wars. Like whoever has a bigger monster, essentially. Amaryllis touch touches back down. We try not to play in the mirror force too hard because we we do we get rocked, you know. But um, yeah, you get your ass whooped to this mirror force back there. And speak of the devil, there it is. Yeah, all right. Sneaky, sneaky bastard. All right. Hey. So we try to go for game there by reviving that, but. Um, the good thing there is that because we top the wolf and Celestia activates by sending cost, so we're gonna actually able to build right. wolf from there. Yeah, and we tear. That's very nice. Yeah, we draw. Storm. Oof, that's a nice draw. Yeah, yeah, but we're not. What's your back? Mirror force, yeah. And that's why oh, I'm I mirror force in this in, in decks like this. I thought I was gonna commit another monster, but I wanted to blow the mirror force on the Titania before you know having to commit this. Yeah, hand. that's fair. Mirror Force is a very good choice. It's not in my deck list right now, but it is a it's a very good choice. That's why I cited it. It's just nuts. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, like, damn, look at this. Here we go. Yeah, yeah Yu-Gi-Oh special right here. But yeah, hey, that man. is the Yu-Gi-Oh special. But you got that nice scores right there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's but gonna hurt. Sixteen. That's gonna hurt. I literally have to win, and this is where we Yu-Gi-Oh the shit out of this guy. So throw two. No, yeah. Two. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah i mean yeah that's Yu-Gi-Oh. But, I mean, that's like, just Yu -Gi -Oh. that, but we were going to average back all the all the options too to try to eventually get the honest and like that was our other way of yeah how many cards are in deck four yeah that's really good yeah that's really good all, all right, right so this is my is this the what match is this that i sent you here this is, this is this the your, um your um okay yeah. Okay, yeah. So you can see my opening hand. My opening hand is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's so good. Let's face the facts here. Right, so good. And, and then again, it's so good. Oh, man. And then I hit a wolf. I hit a wolf off the recharge. And I I can try to bait out the attack the Bora and not have to commit anything. Yeah. But on the flip side, again, right. they draw the second one, oh, so it's not like God. I'm not drawing this stupid shit. Yeah. Absurd. Yeah, and you don't care if you collude, so you fucking honest beats that shit. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, 
I was very afraid of Icarus. I mean, I guess it yeah, makes sense. Like, I, it was so interesting. That they didn't it. even place down um, like Raiko after that, but I, I see what you. Um, but I guess it makes sense, right? I mean, yeah, you could fish back for um, you know Honest there. You know that Honest is not in hand, so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He summons bitch ass Blizzard, you know, and tries to make the uh, Cataster. But yeah, this is where if you like committed the Raiko here, we were popping that thing ten times. We draw Avarice. Oh my god. Yeah, we do. That does shoot hurt. I was like, oh, I was like, oh yeah, baby, and then he flipped it, and I'm like, bruh. <laughs> yeah. <Come on. laughs> oh my god, but you still have this, and you're holding this Avarice tube, like, which is insane because like you're you're manipulating your deck to make it be insane. Like kind of the concept we talked about earlier. And there's Judgment Dragon. They don't even need to summon Judgment Dragon. You need to summon that card yeah. all. Pot of Avarice. Oh, we love that. <laughs> we love any Judgments of Pot of Avarice. My goodness. So I held the T-Roar here again because I'm playing around the Icarus attack. Um, you know, that that's really the thing I'm trying to do. And then this, this, just, this just clears it up. I get the Lila in case he's got oppression. And if he has oppression, I could heavy for Starlight. And then, I, and then I could uh, oppression it and then just drop JD for game. Yeah. So and this you, game you're, here, you're great. really going to see the power of card destruction because my hand blows. I mean, right. it's good, but he's going to draw a dust shoot. Right. But also, too, and Imperial Iron Wall was an absolute waste of time. Like, even, <laughs> even last time, the, the one thing I wanted to point out, too, is that, like, you didn't feel the need to slam JD because you didn't have to. Like, and that's important yeah. because there, in every light sworn get deck that I've played prior to playing a list that was that we've been working on with this one, it felt like you had to do that every single time, like just to do anything. Whereas, yes, it was like the only play, right? Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, this Iron one was a little iffy, but like you know, it's, yeah, no, it was an absolute waste time. I and then I just, I don't know what I, did. I don't know what I did here. I just, I was just a bozo. I will say this. And I, I somehow met Iron Wall game. and then drop JD, you could stop yourself from getting bottomless. So, you know, there's some merit to it. It's not like the craziest thing in the world, you know? But yeah, you're Fortunately, he doesn't have any pressure right now, which is really kind of what saved me. Because again, here we go, bricking up. I don't want to push that the Necro Gardener because I'm just not trying to walk into Ashura and then, you know, have them do Blackwing things. Yeah. And then this is the turn. I mean, I rip a recharge off the top and I draw absolutely insane off of it. Oh, the two best cards. Got like it. Heavy card destruction, just crazy. And no response to the heavy storm. Outrageous. And my draw is crazy. Holy <laughs> shit. There's so much green. There's so much green. Oh, and I definitely had my ass clench when uh, when I summoned, summoned the Jane to attack over. And unfortunately, he didn't have anything. Yeah, and you had to take care of the tuner there. I think you hit Wolf here. Yeah, so good. Then you're back in this fucking game. You have Celestia. Yeah, over. and then it's just Celestia City here. Yeah, and you put three right back in the deck. So, like, your chances of just seeing even another one after this is just crazy. And you hit another Wolf. And then I hit another Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's 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 so crazy how Avarice just allows you to, like, make your mills even more broken when you have 15 cards left in deck. Like, that was so crazy. Like, it didn't even matter. Yeah. That, it, didn't, it didn't matter. It's so... Cr no, it didn't even matter. It was just insane. Yeah, it was absolutely. insane. And it's like you said, like, I try to hold the avarice as long as I can so I can manipulate the deck and mill out everything. And because, like, listen, I don't want to... I don't want to play Pot of Avarice and draw Gareth. Like, <laughs> I don't want that. That's, you know, I want to draw something good. I want to draw something juicy that I put back in, not... not a. I don't want to call them bulk light swarms, but like they're kind of bulk light swarms. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're only playing them because their name is light swarm, and they build two to three cards. That's it. Right. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. A little. A lot of them are a little bit situational. So this was a replay from a game that I played actually right before you ended up calling me, and I, I thought it was against Amaryllis. Just, I mean, based on yeah, the things that I so saw, so. Lone Fire and Dandelion. Um. Oh man. Yeah. Set Ryko pass. Makes sense. I mean, wow, so good. Very good. It's very good. Part of me thought about going heavy storm, charge a light brigade for Aaron, but I was like, if that's a Raiko, I'm gonna be tight. Oh <laughs> so God. I didn't do it. And you got Wolf too. Very nice. Yeah, you you heavy there. Charge. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Hitting that Gareth was also in absolutely insane. 
And but the one thing is that right now, so with the three averages right now, if I didn't play three averages, that foolish is losing a lot of value right wow, now. Yeah, um, because I am getting so many wolves out of the deck. I'm um, not. I mean, listen, you can still get plague and necrogard now, but I'm also about to mill five. Like I'd rather just mill one of them for free. Right, and those are terrible. Yeah, I lost the Gareth. Yeah, those are garbage. Yep, I lost the Gareth roulette. I lost the Gareth roulette there. Yeah. It feels like every time when it's maybe that's just like a light sworn thing, but like it feels like every time you play Gareth, you always mill the cards that are not light sworn. <laughs> so, exactly. yeah, this debris dragon hurts. <laughs> like, that was a terrible, terrible uh, black rose dragon, but it I plays the but, uh, God, like for Christ's sake, my goodness. <laughs> oh man, all right. Well, he's sitting and chilling for a bit again. Yeah, I mean, he's also not really drawing very well either. His hand is full of a lot of jank. Yeah, fair enough. And at least you have a hamster for the third Raikou. Yeah, yeah, perfect. All right. Let's see. All right, some saying an attack, and if we rip Avarice, exactly what we want to see. Yeah, that Avarice is it's nuts. Yeah. I get the Raikou out of the deck first because I don't want to see it. Fair enough. And at least he does. He can't like commit any. Oh well, there's Caius. All right. Yeah, this is when I learned that he was playing quick draw because I was like, wait a minute. I was like, Caius, like, what kind of deck are you playing right now? And then I'm like, oh, not Amaryllis. <laughs> right. That's what he but, does, unfortunately, absolutely eat the scores. Yeah. Eats the scores. Yeah. And then Volcanic Shell adds himself. He's playing the shells too. And like, this is where we party hard. Oh, yeah, so God. drawing that recharge allowed me to just stuff all those wolves back in, make my make my foolish live again, yeah. or a little bit more live. I had to draw another one, unfortunately. I did think about going for some kind of Tempest Magician line here, but I, you know, I don't want to walk into Gores and commit everything. So I figured, let me try to get him below three thousand. Um, he can't kill me next turn. I'm going to hit the Necrogardener. Um, so he can't kill me next turn unless he plays some thing that I don't know about. Um, right. And then the next turn, I can just. Defend the Lila, pop a back row if he's got more than one, you know, well, sucks. And then just blow him up. Yeah. And, that's, and, then, and then I rip a Celestia, exactly which kind of just... happens here, yeah. I mean... Yeah, and then he just scoops it up, which is fine. Yeah. Now, this game here, the one thing I'm going to preface this with is that my opponent mills abysmally this game. Yeah. Every single mill that he mills is absolute trash. And I was commenting on it. If you look at what I'm writing, I'm like, wow, like that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> you trash. You know, so even now, like I've already hit. Look at that bottomless <laughs> imprisoning bottomless. Like yeah. man, oh, that's God. bad. <laughs> oh, and this is going to destroy e karma cut. My God, and you have honest in hand for it. So good. Wow. Yeah, you're such a good spot. They have to have this Arcus too. So you're going to see right now too. Like I milled two averses already, and like if I didn't have the third one in the deck, like wow, well, that's a damn shame. You know, he is about to eat this honest here. Yeah, <laughs> he just sent it anyway. My God, hey. yeah, I hold the crow. I'm just holding the crow for the avarice. I know he's got. They they always have one. Yeah, they always have one. Uh, they always have one. Drawing that second honest was also absolutely insane. There, yeah, this Arcus is just going in way harder than like it should. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It really is. It had no business staying on the board that long. Oh my God. Oh my. God. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Him showing the world. All right, so he goes back. He, he can't target Ryko with Avarice, and then I DD Crow, the quick draw. Oh, my God. And again, the, the, the writing's kind of on the wall at this point. And, you put two and I melt two wolves and Plague. And you see, I screamed Yu-Gi-Oh at him, because, like, <laughs> what are you supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. that's just Yu-Gi-Oh. That's Lightsworn doing Lightsworn things. You know, I mean, I had the outs for the, for the board anyway, but it just made it free. Oh man, no, but this was like this was like a very good showing as like to you drew bad and then you found ways to play so that you could eventually draw into your pieces. It feels like Amaryllis in that way, where like you just draw these unplayable yeah. hands, like one card could turn your hand right around and like you're you're in the game. And uh, it it seems to me that this is the most consistent way to at least play the deck for at least from what I see right now. Yeah. But um yeah, man, I mean like you're you're crushing ladder with it, you're crushing world league with it. I I crushed my opponent week one with it so um but yeah like any like we're gonna wrap up here but any final thoughts on like the deck or like the future of life sworn or, or or anything like that um 
In general, I mean, right now I'm very pleased with the deck. There are some things I would like to fit in the main board. I mean, Mirror Force is incredible on the main deck. Um, Mirror Force, I, I do, again, I always think about Beckoning Light, but it, I would never, ever play more than one copy. Because um, you just don't want to see two. You do not want to see two. If you mill one, it's kind of like Needle Bug Nest. If you mill the one, what do you care? If you see it, cool. Yeah. Um, I was really comfortable with the sideboard. Again, I felt like it really did just handle a lot of the nonsensical things that I, I, I don't want. I don't want to lose to a floodgate. It's as simple as that. Right. Um, I felt the deck feels really good, and it's and it's like you said before, like you can just you can play. And one of the things in Yu Gi Oh, like I'm not generally a salty loser, but I'm salty if I can't play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you just beat me, okay, you beat me. But if I'm just sitting here like scratching myself because my hand does nothing, then I'm salty. <laughs> Um, and with this deck, like even with like some of the bricky cards that you can draw, I just feel like I can always do something instead of just sitting there, just like getting my ass whooped. Yeah. And it's like, the, the you card, know, the, uh, and like every card just supports the light swarm packages and stuff like so nicely. Like we saw in all those replays have like just T war just kept things alive, like nonsensically. And they, and they had to play so weird after it. And then like Celestia's were touching down left and right. And Avarice was just like, and after you averaged like a bunch of wolves back, you were just hitting them like nuts off the Celestias. And that's where like the grind power of the deck comes where it didn't really have that before, which is crazy. But right. Because with Wolf, Wolf ultimately is one of the best lights weren't cards when it's, you know, not in your fucking hand. And that's one of the big weaknesses I found with Christia and and even more of the, the Twilighty package decks is a Christia Sworn doesn't play Wolf usually and if you do play wolf like man oh man you are going to be drawing terribly yeah. and and the twilight variants usually don't play it either and it's like i feel like i'm milling for nothing yeah when i don't play wolf yeah he's like like not 2100 not generating value Phil for he free summons himself he's an extender he's crazy bullish and celestial yeah. you love seeing that in your opening hand it does everything you know like it turns your whole deck on but yeah we're going to wrap yeah. it up here, but, you know, Bert, obviously amazing having you on to the channel here. We we had crushed our opponents with this new Light Sworn list, but uh, please like, comment, and subscribe for more Amaryllis, Light Sworn, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Edison, Bert-related contact, and I'll see you all guys later on today. Peace! Have a great day. Stay safe, y'all.